All right. Ready to dive into something really cool. Cool. Yeah, really cool. A llama and deep seek R1. Okay, yeah, I know those. I think everyone listening probably wants to know how to run big, powerful AI models right on their own computers. Definitely. So that's what we're talking about. No more relying on the cloud, no subscription fees. You can even keep all your data on your own machine. Right, so privacy and everything. Exactly. We have some sources that get into all the really technical details. Yeah, they're dense. But we're going to break it all down for you. Pull out the coolest parts. The good stuff, yeah. And what it all means for, you know, anyone, you, me. This tech is seriously leveling the playing field. All I right. mean, think about it. AI used to be something only these huge companies could really use. Yeah. Because they had tons of money and resources. They and... needed giant servers and stuff. Exactly. Now... Anyone can... Basically, anyone with a decent computer can use AI, contribute to AI, make yeah. the next big thing. Potentially. Yeah. So we've got Alama and DeepSeek R1. They work together. So imagine Alama is like the engine, yeah. the behind the scenes thing that makes everything run. Yeah. Like the power source, basically. Yeah. And then DeepSeek R1, that's like the brains of the operation. Right. That's the actual language model itself. Uh huh. It's like having, you know, uh, a brilliant assistant, but it's a computer. Yeah, yeah. That can write your code yeah. and generate reports and analyze data. Even like, you know, write the perfect email. Oh, an AI that can write all my emails for me. <laughs> I'm sold. <laughs> Potentially someday, yeah. That's amazing, though. Mm -hmm. So seriously, what kind of computer do I need? Okay. We're... Do I have to spend thousands of dollars? No, no, not necessarily. Um, you'll want a decent amount of RAM, though. At least 16 gigabytes. Oh, okay. But, I mean, lots of computers these days come with that. Yeah, that's not too bad. Yeah. And, you know, a good graphics card can really help. Oh, I was going to ask about that. It's not like, you know, you have to have one. Yeah. But, especially for bigger tasks. It makes a big difference. It'll speed things up. Yeah. It's kind of like having a personal trainer, you know? Yeah. Like, if you've got one, you're going to see results faster. Makes sense. But you can still get a good workout on your own. Okay. So, I don't need to be a tech millionaire to get started. That's good. Yeah. What about installing all this stuff? Oh. Is it really hard? Um... Not as hard as you might think. Really? Especially, you know, if you're comfortable using, like, uh, a terminal, the command line. Okay. Olama has these pre-built files you can use for Windows, Mac, Linux. Okay, that's good. Yeah. If you're on a Mac and you use Homebrew, it's even easier. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then does Olama, like, handle getting DeepSeek R1 set up, too? Oh, yeah. Totally. Okay. It'll download it, set it up, everything, so you don't have to, like go hunt for the files yourself. That's great. So it downloads the whole model. That's a big file, right? Yeah, it's pretty big. Over okay. 10 gigabytes. So make sure you've got space, you know? Yeah, okay. And SSD will make things go a lot faster, too. Yeah. Like, imagine you're trying to read this giant book, uh -huh. but the pages are all glued together. Oh, right. So using an SSD, it's like you can actually turn the pages smoothly. I like that. Good analogy. <laughs> okay, so now, say we've got it all installed. Okay. What then? How do we actually use DeepSeek R1 to do stuff? So this is where, you know, if you have coding skills, they can really come in handy. Okay. Alama works well with programming languages like Python. Mm -hmm. You just write a few lines of code, send instructions to DeepSeek R1, and get results back. So it's like having a conversation with the AI. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like a super smart computer. So I could, like, write a program that uses DeepSeek R1 to analyze, I don't know, data from a research project. Totally, yeah. Or you could make a chat bot for your website, generate scripts for videos. I mean, well, the possibilities are pretty exciting. Yeah, but I know what you're thinking, right? What could go wrong? Uh-huh, exactly. <laughs> it all sounds amazing, but come on. Yeah, you always got to prepare for I'm them. bracing myself for the inevitable tech hiccups. Totally, yeah. Yeah. So what are like the most common issues people run into? When they're installed. Um, well, one thing is dependency conflicts. Oh, yeah. Especially on Linux. It's like trying to bake a cake. And no, you're missing an ingredient. You're missing like a key ingredient. Yeah. Uh, but luckily. It happens to the best of us. Usually you can just search online, figure out what's missing. Okay, so Google is our friend. Pretty much. What about firewalls blocking a llama? I've definitely had that happen before. Yeah, that's a good point. You might have to adjust your firewall settings. To let a llama talk to, you know, the outside world. Right, give it permission. And keeping your graphics drivers updated, that's always a good idea. Oh, yeah, for sure. Especially for NVIDIA cards. Especially NVIDIA, yes. Yeah, outdated drivers are the worst. So, okay, what if DeepSeek R1 itself, like the model, has trouble loading? 
what should people look out for? One thing that can trip people up is running out of, uh, what's it called? VRAM. VRAM. Video RAM. Yeah. Deep Seek R1 needs a lot of memory to do its thing. So if your system's running low, it's kind of like trying to fit an elephant in a Mini Cooper. <laughs> okay. It's not going to work. So, you know, close any other programs you don't need. Free up some space. Close all those extra browser tabs. Yeah. Okay. What if the model files themselves are, I don't know, corrupted or something? That's easy. Easy fix. Yeah, a llama can just delete the old files and download fresh ones, like hitting the reset button. Nice. Okay, but even if everything's installed perfectly, sometimes things can still feel slow. Yeah. What are some things that can cause that? Keep an eye on your CPU usage. If it's always maxed out, a llama might be trying to do too much at once. Okay. You can use something called CPU affinity to assign certain tasks to specific CPU cores. It's like, you know, having different chefs in a kitchen, each specializing in a certain dish. Oh, interesting. Okay. So what about slow disk speeds? Yeah. If you're running off a, like a really old hard drive, that can definitely slow you down. Yeah. That's why SSDs are so good. Exactly. But if you want to get even more speed, you could look into using a RAM disk. A RAM disk. What's that? It's like this super fast temporary storage area. Oh. It's like having the chef's prep station right next to the stove. Gotcha. So we've talked about a lot of potential problems, but what about when you're using Alama's REST API right. to interact with DeepSeek R1? Yeah. Are there any common issues with like the connection? Um, one thing you might see is timeout errors. Oh, yeah. Especially if you're sending complex instructions that take a while. Right. It's like calling a friend and then getting impatient when they don't answer right away. Right. You just need to tell your code to be a little more patient. Uh, okay. Patience is a virtue, I guess. Yeah. Especially with AI. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, sometimes you run into cores restrictions. Cores. What's that? It's a security thing. Okay. That can block access to the API. Like, imagine there's a bouncer at a club. Okay. And they need to see your ID. So you have to configure a llama to, you know, let the right things in. Give it the right credentials. <laughs> okay, so we've talked about all these hurdles, but come on, I want to get to the good stuff. What can we actually do with all this? Okay, well, what about content creation? Okay, yeah. DeepSeek R1 is really good at generating text, like blog posts, product descriptions, captions for social media, even creative writing. Wait, so I could have it help me write a short story? You totally could. That's wild. What else? Um, it can also help with data analysis. Oh, yeah. You can feed it a spreadsheet, have it analyze trends, find patterns, even create visualizations. Wow. So instead of me staring at a spreadsheet for hours, exactly, you can just hand it over to the AI. Yeah. And here's another one, customer support automation. Oh, yeah. Like imagine building your own chat bot. Those are popping up everywhere. Exactly. That can answer questions and help people. It'd be cool to build one myself. Yeah, it's definitely possible. And I, I mean, there are so many other applications. Think about like research and development. You could train a DeepSeek R1 on all the scientific data and have it help researchers find connections and insights that they might miss otherwise. Wow. So it could help speed up discoveries. Potentially, yeah. That's incredible. This could really change things. But this is just the beginning, right? Alama and DeepSeek R1, they're still being developed. Yeah, for sure. So there's a lot more to come. Absolutely. One of the most exciting things is multi-GPU support. So you'll be able to use the power of multiple graphics cards at the same time. Oh, wow. So as GPUs keep getting better. Alama will be able to use them. Okay. But how can people keep up with all this stuff? It's changing so fast. The Alama community is really helpful. They have this super active online forum where users share tips and tricks and even work on projects together. Oh, cool. Like a big brainstorming session. Yeah, exactly. And they have a GitHub repository where you can see the latest updates and report bugs and even contribute to the code if you want. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's the cool thing about open source. It's all about sharing. Okay, so we've covered a lot in this first part, from installation and troubleshooting to like the amazing things you can do with a llama and deep sea car. We've just scratched the surface. Let's do a quick recap. Yeah. We started by talking about a llama, the engine that makes everything work, and DeepSeek R1, the powerful language model. Then we went through the installation process, talked about some common problems and how to fix them. Yeah. And then, of course, we had to explore all the cool stuff you can do with this technology. Mm. Content creation, data analysis, building chatbots, speeding up research. The possibilities are pretty endless. Yeah, they really are. And DeepSeek R1 and Alama, they're still evolving. So in the next part, we're going to talk about fine-tuning. Fine-tuning. That's where you can train DeepSeek R1 to become, like, a specialist. 
in the tasks that are most important to you. Right. Okay. It's like giving your AI a personalized education. Gotcha. I like that. So stay tuned for part two, where we'll unlock even more of the incredible power of a llama and deep seek R1. So welcome back to our deep dive. Last time, remember we were talking about all the cool stuff you can do with a llama and deep seek? Yeah, we barely scratched the surface though. Exactly. And now we're going to take it even further. Okay, I'm ready. Customization. That's the key. Right. Fine tuning. Where you can train deep seek R1 to be like an expert in a specific area. Yeah, exactly. It's like taking this already amazing AI and giving it, you know, a specialized degree in whatever you need it to do. So you could have it like analyze legal documents or medical research papers. Yeah. Or financial data or historical texts or I mean. Wow. OK, but how does that work? How do you actually do that? Well, you need data a good data set, structure data. Right, so it can learn. Yeah, you're basically giving DeepSeek R1 a textbook with clear instructions and examples and the right answers. Like practice problems. Kind of, yeah, and through that process, it gets better, it adapts. Okay, so what does that look like, technically? Usually it involves a format called JSON. JSON. Yeah, it's just a way to organize data for training AI models. Okay, and I'm guessing a llama has some tools to make this easier. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. A llama has a specific command for fine tuning. A llama fine tune. You just tell it which model to train, where your data set is, and a few other settings. Like what? Like one important setting is the number of epochs. Epoch. It basically controls how many times the model practices with the whole data set. Think of it like, you know, an athlete running through a drill <laughs> over and over again to get better. Okay, so the more epochs, the more practice. Exactly. And the better the AI will perform, usually. But it takes longer, of course. Right. Trade-offs. So what if I don't have my own data set? Can I still <laughs> use fine-tuning? Oh, for sure. There are tons of public data sets available, like on Hugging Face. Yeah. They have a huge repository of data for all sorts of different tasks and fields. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah. And you can even combine public data with your own private data to create something really unique and powerful. So now I'm picturing this AI that's been fine-tuned on like all the medical literature in the world, plus my own personal health records. Yeah, that's getting into some really interesting territory, ethically speaking. Right, lots of implications to consider. Yeah. Okay, let's shift gears a bit. What about scaling? Like, what if my project is so big that I need more power than my computer can handle? Can I scale a llama up to meet that demand? That's where cloud computing comes in. It's basically like renting a supercomputer in the cloud. Platforms like AWS have incredibly powerful machines with top-of-the-line GPUs. Okay, so we're talking serious horsepower here. Definitely. And you can use tools like Terraform to easily set up and manage those cloud resources, so it's not as complicated as it sounds. So I could unleash Alama and DeepSeek R1 on, like, a virtual supercomputer. Exactly. And the great thing is you only pay for what you use, so if you just need a quick burst of power to run a big AI job, you can do that. That's really flexible. Yeah. And this is where automation comes in. Oh, yeah. That's something I wanted to ask about. You can use scripting languages like Bash to automate all sorts of tasks. So what kinds of things could I automate? I mean, imagine having a llama automatically download the latest version of DeepSeek R1 and then retraining it on your latest data and even deploying the updated model to your cloud setup all without you having to lift a finger. Wait, so my AI could basically be learning and improving on autopilot. Yeah, pretty cool. All right. That's amazing. So we've gone from understanding the basics of a llama in DeepSeek R1 to talking about some pretty advanced techniques. It's exciting to see how this open source technology is making AI accessible to everyone. Absolutely. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. There's so much more we could talk about. Okay, well, before we get too carried away, let's do a quick recap of what we covered in this part. We started by talking about fine tuning, where you can give DeepSeek R1 a specialized education in a certain field. Right, by using your own data or public data sets. And then we discussed how to scale up Balama using cloud infrastructure to handle really big tasks. And of course, we couldn't forget about automation, which makes everything so much smoother. Definitely. Okay, so in the final part of this episode, we're going to shift our focus to the future. We'll talk about what lies ahead for Alama and DeepSeek R1 and how you can stay ahead of the curve in this crazy, fast-moving world of AI. So buckle up, because we're not done yet. And we're back for the final part of our deep dive into Alama and DeepSeek R1. The grand finale. Exactly. So we've covered, what, installation, 
troubleshooting, fine-tuning, scaling. A lot, yeah. But now I want to talk about the future. You, you, okay, yeah. What's next for this amazing technology? Well, what excites me is like just how fast everything's moving. Mm. It seems like every week there's something new, some new breakthrough, some mind-blowing application, you know? Yeah, it's hard to keep up. Mm. Speaking of new stuff, we were reading about multi-GPU support coming to Alama. That sounds pretty exciting. Oh, yeah, that's huge. That means we'll be able to use multiple graphics cards at the same time to run even bigger AI models. Wow. So it's like teamwork <laughs> for GPUs. Yeah, kind of. Like yeah. imagine a team of, I don't know, Olympic athletes. Okay, yeah. All working together to achieve this amazing goal. So as GPUs keep getting more powerful, mm -hmm. Alama's going to be ready to take advantage of that. Exactly. And I mean, the team behind Alama, they're constantly improving things, adding new features, optimizing code. You know, it's like a pit crew for a race car. I like that analogy. Always tweaking and tuning. Yeah. So with everything changing so fast, how can people stay up to date? The Olama community is amazing for that. They have this online forum where people share tips and tricks and tutorials, even collaborate on projects. Oh, cool. So it's like a place to learn from each other. Yeah. And they have a GitHub repo where you can track all the latest developments and even contribute to the code yourself. That's the beauty of open source. So as we wrap up this deep dive, what's like the one piece of advice you would give to our listeners as they start exploring Olama and DeepSeek R1? I would say be curious. Okay. Yeah. Experiment. Don't be afraid to try new things. And, you know, remember that this technology is always evolving. So be open to learning and adapting. Great advice. So we've reached the end of our journey into the world of Alama and DeepSeek R1. I hope you all enjoyed it. It was fun. It was definitely mind-blowing for me. For me, too. And remember, the future of AI is out there waiting for you. Go explore <laughs> it. <laughs> Happy AIing, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>